Hello and welcome to Report. This is a news and information program on events and developments in Papua New Guinea. The idea of reef management is not a new concept for many Papua New Guineans living along the coast or the atolls. It is a tradition that was practiced by our ancestors, going back as far as managing our traditional fishing grounds. But today, the need for food as well as the demands of our cash economy has threatened and put a lot of stress on our traditional fishing grounds. In this edition, we look at Mahoni Anadari, a research and marine conservation organization based in Kimbe, West New Britain province. Last week, a team from Mahoni Anadari visited Manus Island and conducted surveys on two locally managed marine areas. The survey will help them with the baseline information to identify ways that may affect the traditional management practices of the people. Noel Wavu with this report. This famous sound of the chauka and the beating of the garamut makes you think of no other place but this beautiful frontier hidden in the remote corner of the Bismarck Sea and the Western Pacific Ocean. Commonly known to the marine explorers as the Admiralty Islands, the Manus Archipelago totals no fewer than 150 islands. Manus Island got its present name in the late 19th century following the ethnological work of the American anthropologist Margaret Mead. She made reference to the Maunus, the once dominant ethnic group found on the main island. The Maunus are also referred to as the Titans. They make 12% of the population of about 30,000. The other ethnic groups that build up the population are the Usiai and the Matankors. Like the surrounding islands, Manus is decked out by a typical vegetation composed of mangroves, pandanus, coconut trees and sago palms along the coast, and a tropical rainforest inland. Lorengau is the main center of Manus. It is located along the north coast of the main island and it is 15 kilometers west of Momote Airport on the Los Negros Island. Lorengau is also the central place where all government basic services are provided and managed. The people of Manus are great fishermen. They depend greatly on the sea for their livelihood. I got plenty of awareness, Lord is like something, so that boy can try to preserve him, Lord is like something, Lord, all future generation, Lord, when I can something. I go long so long, I don't have to look at peace of the same people by me, because I'm so long, I go inside long house for me, I go prime success, I go long, 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 I go
this pala line where me play walk long. Tram like him all by come na halibi me pala long. All um, tram look him solo harap long me pala na. Me pala yet by look out him. Assisting to preserve and protect the marine environment, the Mahonian Dari Research and Conservation Center in West New Britain province extended their marine conservation project to Manus. Heading the project is Dr. Mark Solon. Dr. Mark comes from Manus and he is very concerned about preserving the marine and terrestrial resources. He said the New Guinea Islands is a maritime region and for that reason, Mahonian Adari has gone its way to raise awareness to the people whose lives are so dependent on the sea. We are following up with three communities that were visited about two years ago with our education awareness program, where our puppet show visited communities like Ahus, Endra, Ponam, BP, Powat, and a lot of community schools on the north coast of the island. We are only helping them, although the knowledge for managing them in a traditional way is their own knowledge. We are only encouraging them to continue to promote that idea. And we believe also that this traditional knowledge of uh, protecting marine species and other terrestrial species which are important to the lives of people is a message that we need to encourage a lot more people to begin to continue to promote this because sooner or later these resources will be depleted if we do not take measures to try and protect them. A team of researchers included Chris Tumi, John Aini, Paul Led and Pomat Kaluvin were sent out to Manus last week to carry out a survey on the two locally managed marine areas. These are Papua New Guineans who have some experience uh, with the National Fisheries Authority or what was formerly Department of Fisheries. Uh, they have done surveys in some parts of the country and this team are coming together. I must say they are quite rare though. Um, and they are coming together and they are doing these basic um, surveys. Uh, that's an area we feel is also important in developing the capacity in country and training them and giving them the opportunity to use these skills and knowledge to assess our resources. So a small team of about four people, all Papua New Guineans who are working very closely with Mahonia, with Mr. Chris Tumi, our conservation officer, as their leader. And the challenges are many, but the last few weeks of activities on surveying the reef suggest to us that the potential of Papua New Guinean researchers is really high. And given the right motivation, we can attract a lot more Papua New Guineans to begin to take up interest in conservation issues, marine as well as terrestrial. The challenge in Mahonia is to lead in the marine environment um, assessment and awareness issue. Aus Island is about 30 minutes by boat from Lorengau town. Legends has it that the Aus people were originated from the main island. They were great hunters, gatherers and fishermen. Their arrival on the island was in search of food. The survey team accompanied Dr. Mark Solon to revisit the islands and seek approval from the group for the survey to take place. This meeting was important as this program is a community-based project.
There are two islands. One is inhabited by over 1,000 people and the other lays unoccupied, covered with lowland rainforest and coconut plantation. This unpopulated island is the locally managed marine area. The two passages on this island are owned by three clans. They include the Ambahan, Lomoy and Raikub clans. Aus Island has more than five clans. This is interpreted through the number of house boys or in other words, the man's house, in every villages on the island. The house boy is a very significant building in the Manus culture. It symbolizes wealth and power. Every clan or house boy of Ahus Island owns a portion of the reef. Long old reef, like a certain area, long old certain clan. You know, all get a river, all get a house. You can legally buses and belong one one clan. One one clan, it'll go to buses for them. One one clan, it got um, um, home bomb or little coconuts. All year, we go to see him the salad around him the salad buses long home bomb, no kissing long old salad clan. The idea of reap management is not a new concept for these people. It is an old tradition that was practiced by their ancestors to manage their fishing grounds. But in the present days, a lot of changes are taking place and the number of marine resources are decreasing. Thomas Pohanhelan is the son of the Raikub chief. Since his father's death, he inherited his role as the leader of the Raikub clan. Passing long all arm, look out long all picking in all this plan long all narpla way. Now we walk long go hard more long mipla. So mipla in no got more narpla means or way long passing long halpy mipla. The only way now mipla is I walk long and long solo warata so. In no got place in no got more narpla hablo walk him garden. So we play live now lo solo wara. Time we play looking all same all population lo all picking ini. We walk long grow we come on top. And we want plat ting ting where we play walk long ting ting now long. Pass him to plat passes. But he got enough fish all when I'm kind um a piece all when I'm kind he come inside. No time long help him long all future long all picking ini blow me plat. Although it is a small island, Ahus has a primary school, which is seen to be the well-established school throughout the province. We have a bigger problem because of the um, teachers' houses. We cannot um, expand further out because the school area is so so small, the space is so limited, we cannot expand. So we have problems with um, taking teachers from elsewhere to come and teach because we have only two teachers' houses. So to overcome that problem, um, every year we have to request for teachers from ours. And I'm very pleased to say, even though we are from ours, we are very committed to our students. Aus became a primary school in 2001 under the new education reform and has about 160 school children. Having a school in such an island would mean they have to work extra hard to find their children's school fees, better clothes and food. Benedict Pyongon is a community health worker on Aus. She says, 
Life on the island today is not the same as it was in the past. Me yet me pili more than ten years ago or twenty years ago. Me lick lick na. Me go to mama lo solwara. All something is the planty fish, planty wurda. Na long this la time. Me look more than it hard na. Me got concerned to run a worry too long. All picking nipple me now all is that. Me plan sa kong market now him. Me plan no kisim pista sol. Me plan kisim fish na all something lo solwara all sem me talk ya na. Planti kai kai, mi plai sa wukum mol flower nam bau dia wukum scorn na wunem, mi plai wukum popcorn, mi plai kusi mol oli wunem long white man, na mi plai sa kom market tu long en, sem long market nam bau yulukim inokat needs tu mas long seni song peace na saksa, oli need money, ol mainland oli like money bau kolong saksa plong ol, na ol island oli like money ikolong peace plong ol. Itambulong Man kam long em long yusima, mipla like mo sem sopo soli oli kam oli aski mipla long kam long em, cause em ino blow sad man em blow mipla ol getal long mipla ika kay mipla ilu kautim sol blow ol getal long behind time oli lik blow mipla we oli stab behind oli kaman tap em this island em pay half we mipla walk long stab long em na. The survey that was conducted in Manus was to establish the baseline information that could be used to identify ways that might have impact on the management practices. One of the methods that was used to collect data was through open and closed areas. The open and closed area are basically two a part of the method of studying a particular environment or a particular place in the reef. Uh, scientists and those who are studying it would like to compare the data. The survey team was basically looking at the number of different fish and life of corals on the protected sites. Um, we play actually look look long reef areas as well because I'm important habitat habitat uh, areas belong all the kind of resources. So you play through my old transit line, uh, counting all all fish, na la line, na the kind of something. Na the same play can look look long kind of something with some dense cities, na all kind simple in. Information in up long help me along or something. You can save long only something will come up long this low place. Major component long all long all fish me pla bugim long long al tambu area ya and uh all surgeon fish, all this la bilak play got night long as long ya. Long uh as the long first time we play walking long uh open area, the no got plenty fish to mass. I think this lay uh attributed long uh area and uh you wear Santa Sol. Lonyo village on the southeast coast of Manus Island was also another area that was surveyed. Lonyo village is on the Los Negros Island. They have a migratory species to protect. The passage separates the Los Negros and the main Manus Island. It is the main entrance into Lorengau and out to the south coast areas. Lonyo Passage is also the migratory route for the mallet fish. It is known that the people of Lonyo have a very special relationship with the mallet fish or in pidgin, karua. Mahoni and Adari will also be conducting a similar survey in the New Island province this year. This marine conservation project is funded by the Lucille Packard Foundation, MacArthur Foundation, and most recently the Community Development Scheme. Donors who are very interested in the activities and are trying to help us, but their message to us is 
you've got to find alternative sources of support. We won't be with you all the time. They will basically act as motivations, motivators to encourage us to find alternative support, but initially they are the main supporters of our activities now. Mahoney and Dari Research and Conservation Center was established in 1996 and has been carrying out awareness programs in the New Guinea Islands region. The awareness programs are carried out through the use of puppet shows and the marine education program in nearby schools. These two programs have proven to be the most powerful tool in building the support for conservation, increasing environmental awareness and inspiring local action to protect coral reefs. We can only hope that the rest of us, Papua New Guineans and uh, internationally as well, should begin to see the issue of protection of the environment as a very important area for investment. Uh, maybe not in the immediate, but in the long term, we all stand to benefit. In the recent tourism expo that was held in the Holiday Inn Hotel this year, a team from Mahonia led by Stanley Wapot came into Port Mosby to promote their conservation programs. Many people are uh, surprised they didn't know about the place and uh, uh, they're starting to know more about Mahonia now and hopefully the message can go around and many people can start to know where the center is and what kind of work we are doing. We trust that many more of us, whether donors or individuals, out there, you don't have to be with a marine environment or a terrestrial environment conservation group to promote the issue of conservation. Each one of us in whatever we do in our communities can encourage uh, our people to become active custodians of the resources that we have. That's all we have time for. Thank you for your company. Until then, I'm Richard Kelleby. Good night.